Have you ever thought tech is listening to your thoughts? Well, that's exactly what I'm here at Startup Mind Portal to have done. They've created a new technology that can read your mind and send it to ChatGPT so you can have a conversation without having to type or speak. Wish me luck. Hi. Hi, Ryan. Good to see you. Hi, good to see you. So tell me a little bit about Mind Portal. What is it? How did the idea come about? Mind Portal is a human AI interaction company. And it was founded after a year of me taking psychedelic <laughs> substances. Okay. During those abstract thinking sessions, a lot of visions came out. So during those sessions, what I set as kind of the thinking goal of those sessions is the future of humanity, how to make an impact, yeah. etc. But really the premise of Mind Portal is we want to explore the nature of human AI interaction. Okay. How can you make a future that's symbiotic, which biologically is win-win. We're going to look at a demo today where we can chat to ChatGPT using our brain. Yes, so this is the world's first demonstration, like never before has this been done. Can you bridge the gap between the human and their thoughts, right. which is the most intimate form of communication, what you think, what you feel, and an AI agent that can understand and respond to those thoughts. All right, should we try it? Yes, let's do it. Tell me what we're looking at now. So you've got something called an FNIR system, which is able to record brain data, optical brain data, okay. based on the blood flow happening in Ed's brain. Yeah. When Ed imagines language, that obviously activates different parts of the brain. Yeah. And it's that activation that's being picked up in real time. It's also the first demonstration of communicating with ChatGPT as well. Using yeah, so just your mind. Exactly. You'll think a thought, the sentence is classified, but that classified sentence then becomes an input into ChatGPT to then respond to you. Okay, we're gonna have a look at it. What's the goal? What, what do you want to do with this? Where do you see it going? This system, if you were to spend time building it towards commercialization, yeah. you could scale it in a multitude different ways. Okay. So number one is you could scale the number of sentences, and then of course you scale the accuracy. What are we doing first? So if you'd like to pick a sentence. I can All right, well, let's go for Venus. Okay. I'm, a, I'm a space buff. Yep, I'm going to imagine this. Well, I'll read it out loud sure. then, because if you read it out loud, then it raises the question of, is it just taking it from your voice? <laughs> so you're going to think in your mind, if I were on Venus, I would be in a world of extremes. The pressure would feel like being a kilometre underwater, crushing you from all sides. The air is a corrosive nightmare capable of dissolving metal. And forget about rain, it's sulfuric. So you're thinking that. Yep. That's a long sentence to imagine. <laughs> so you can't just imagine the visual of being on Venus. You've got to imagine the actual words in that sentence. Currently, yeah, we're trying to extract the semantics from that. So, yeah. All right, well, let's go. Let's see how that happens. You're going to think those words, and hopefully the uh, chat GPT will respond. So you sent that off as the prompt to your decoder. So now the decoder basically is taking the brain data and yep. trying to like, identify which of the sentences he was thinking. Okay. And then that's over there is outputting the sentence. So we have not had. So you got it wrong. <laughs> so this is the restaurant it's, sentence. Okay. So it was sentence number two, I think. And this is the brain data that went that as he was thinking that sentence went into the system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can do okay. another one and we can show you basically how this progresses as he's imagining. What's the one that works more often than not? Well, if we're we sticking try, to probability, it take a few rounds, probably let's try. Let's try again. Let's see how. Let's see if it works. Pairing that and right. Okay. So this time he's had a chat with Mum on the phone, but it is showing that you can have this conversation. It's just a case of scale. Correct. So with enough data, with a larger model we hypothesize, as we've seen in AI, yeah. or with any breakthroughs in their infancy, the accuracy would improve. And then you'd start to increasingly have the conversation you want without the incorrect inputs. In essence, yeah. what's happening each time, there's an incorrect input, and then there's correct ones. And correct ones are happening enough times for us to know this works. Okay. Scaling data and scaling the model is, let's get it to work more and more times with reduced error, in essence. Should we try it one more time? At least we've seen them all now. Now it should be stressed, this is very early stage. We're looking at a sort of research preview of a technology that with enough scale will improve potentially exponentially. Where do we go? What, am I going to be able to go into a supermarket 
and look at a product and say, in my head, to my AI, can I eat this? And have the AI pick up my thoughts and respond. Can we get to that point? Yeah, I think we can. And the reason being is we've seen this again and again in AI. As you increase the amount of data, mm -hmm. as you increase the model size, you get better performance. So the okay. time constraint, honestly, there is how many people, and, and financial yeah. constraint is around how many people can you collect brain data from? Because yeah. unlike going online or using written sources, which are easier yeah. sources of data to acquire, this is a bit more of a tricky in the current um, paradigm. I've done some back of the napkin calculations okay. just for fun. And okay. it's not as expensive as you might think. All right. And it doesn't take as long as you might think. I think for you know under $15 million, okay. which is you know in the venture capital world or yeah, in, in the world, this is not- pocket change. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You could have in six months time, operating 100, 200 different headgear caps, yeah. people coming in in batches and have thousands of people yeah. going through. Now, of course, my cursory kind of calculations yeah. assumed a threshold you'd need to reach because we yes. don't know how much data will confer so, the best right, result. Let's assume you reach that threshold, you get the funding, yeah. and in a year's time, you've done all the data, you've crunched all the data, your model's working, I can go out and buy a baseball cap and talk to my AI without having to speak out loud. Can I talk to someone else wearing the same baseball cap? And we were gonna have full telepathy with the AI as a translator. So the answer to that is, if you scale the data and if you scale the model and if you integrate it into a cap wearable, then yes, theoretically okay. it should work. It should okay. work. There's no reason why that shouldn't work. So when we you could reach, have telepathy potentially You could have telepathy. The There's years. nothing, and that's what we were setting out to prove. So for example, okay. I could wear headgear Think of a sentence yeah. such as, how are you today? Yeah. That could be then sent through an AI model that takes the text and translates it into a voice yeah. and puts it into your ear as an AirPod, okay. through an AirPod, and you can hear and you me can just thinking, respond, they can respond and you with can respond thoughts. back to my AirPod. So in, a, in, okay. in theory, we're having a telepathic conversation. Neither of us are speaking, yeah. but we're using pre-trained sentences to have a back and forth dialogue, which we're both hearing. And now you've got AI models yeah. that can take a bit of your own voice <laughs> And, 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 and it can sound like sound. you, so it would yeah. sound like Ryan when I'm hearing it, it would sound like me when I'm talking See, to the, you. See, that raises an interesting point because that would potentially give the voiceless a voice because you could uh, use a, a text-to-speech engine based on that exactly. and their thoughts could go directly to the voice engine rather exactly. than having to type it out. Exactly. Well, that was a lot of fun. It didn't work as expected, but it's an early research preview. This isn't a product they're going to be putting on the market tomorrow. However, it did give us a really interesting insight on what we might be using and how we might be interacting with AI and each other in the next few years. And I really hope it works because I do not want to be standing in the supermarket talking to myself when I'm just having a conversation with my AI. Fingers crossed. If you want to find out more about what's going on in the world of AI, find me on Tom's Guide or follow our socials at Tom's Guide.